Hello and welcome to episode 16 of the Apocalyptic Knitter podcast. I've just been rabbiting to myself for the last 10 minutes, recording this and it wasn't recording. So there we go. But you could say that I've given myself a bit of a warm up, so there we go. How are you today? Are you well? Have you got any sunshine where you are? There's a little bit of sunshine here, but it's also in the back of dark clouds. There we go, which I'm sure everybody is somewhere in the UK is like that at the moment. Um so yeah, so how are you how are you? Good. And uh, so say thank you so much if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for bearing with me. I know I'm not the the most shiniest missing podcast out there. What you see is what you get and that's what I hope to hope to be, hope to achieve with this podcast. Uh, I like to keep things nice and real um, and show you all my warts and all of them on my knitting projects because perfect, I am not. Um, if you are a new subscriber, welcome. Um, so I, this is a, a knitting podcast mainly. I do bits of um, crochet as well, um, although I've not picked it up for some time. Um, I like to talk about post-apocalyptic films and TV series that I've been watching and a little bit of budget advice if I come across any budget tips because, you know, cost of living, recession and all that, why not? I'm trying to break down the stigma of money talk and all that. So if that feels like it's something you'd be interested in, then stick around. Um, I don't have any finished objects this week. I uh, My last one was the love note and that is winging its way over to the recipient as we speak. I'm hoping to see if I can finish these today. So we're up to there. I'm seeing the recipient tomorrow. As you can see the colour. On the sock blank, it is starting to get the redness in there. So on the sock blank, it is on this bit here. So it's like all that gorgeous red is going to be missed out. <laughs> so I don't quite know what I'm going to do with that. Because I think by the time I finish the sock, it's just going to be about here. I think. So I'm thinking I may do some shorties for her daughter. I'm not sure yet. I'm getting quite a lot of, um, not requests really as such, but things where I, me and my big mouth, where like people who I know love my socks, I'm like, oh, I don't want to make you these, I don't want me to make you these. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute. This is like, I need to kind of, there's some items of myself and I'm going to come back to that in a minute that I do want to kind of get a wiggle on and make for myself. So before I put these away, I'm making these on my higher, higher sharps. And these are on, has it got the measurements on? Oh, they rubbed off. Um, these to me feel like they are the 2.25 millimeter needles. Um, and the pattern is the blueberry waffle. Is that there? Can you, can you see anything? You can start to see a bit of a tinge of the, the blood, blood red. So yeah, so this is the sock blank is from Easy Knits. And the, the colour was called Dracula. I don't know why you didn't say, just call it Dracula. I was some Dracula. Hey ho. Um, these haven't really knitted up as fast as I thought that they would because they're only like a size six and I, the only thing I can think of is I wasn't sure if the pattern just kind of slowed me down a little bit. Who knows? Um, I'm not going to go for my 
new cast on just yet so i'm going to show you my next um work in progress which i've been giving quite a bit of love at the moment so if you are um wanting to join in the curious handmade um 24 birds mystery knit along and you've not started it and you don't want any spoilers look away now um we are they've released um clue four and i've literally just started i was a little bit behind and i'm not going to say behind because they said you all go at your own pace and i'm only behind because i'm knitting other stuff as well i went a bit wrong now i i don't want to spoil the surprise just yet but i oh that's the wrong project bag there i was do you remember me talking about color four i really didn't know what to do i ended up joining this now we have the silver the silver with purple flex and the purple variegated and purple and teal go together fine right and i tried it a couple of hours in and i just i wasn't 100 percent sure and i don't know if it's because this was just a bit too green a teal or whatever but i wasn't enjoying it but i was i was determined to trust the process um, but at the moment we are on really long ass rows and I did two rows of the colour and then I looked and I could see that I'd gone wrong about four or five rows down without going too much into the pattern detail because obviously it's a paper pattern there's certain sections where a certain decrease kind of lines up and I were at a sink and I thought and it's not a it's not a knit that you can unravel or put a light flying in. I thought I'm gonna have to manually unknit these stitches back. So I did it. It took me about three to four hours which was painful, but it also I took this as a sign that because I wasn't happy with the teal so I changed my mind and I've gone with the red which was a strong contender so this is where we are at the minute oh it looks a bit droopy because it's getting quite big but you can see all the lace work there look at that it's all lacy so if you can see there see like the red starting to come through I really really like this so going through the colours um, the red is a um, hand dyed one but like my friend Tony from Knit 3 Together um, had hand dyed this for me for my birthday um she knows that i love like reds and purples so she did lots of so it's got like purple flecks in there so it does kind of tie in but it, to me it was quite a nice warm red and that's kind of what i liked about it um so it's going so it kind of blends to me it gives enough of a pop but i'm happy with that so it's um, as I say, I've just started Clue 4. I'm literally in the first row of Clue 4. And, yeah, I'm really, I'm really enjoying it. Um, I'm, it's saying that I'm up to 40%. So the middle colour, the plain grey, is from Hummingbird Yarns, which is called Hummingbird Yarns. The softer grey here the light grey with the purple flexing is la bien aimee um, called 
um, Le Petit Noirge. And then this really strong purple, black, blue variegated is um, Undercover Otter called Dr. Fibes, Dr. Phoebes, P-H-I-B-E-S. Um, that base is a Yak Silk. And these two are also single ply merinos, which I wanted to do something with them because obviously I get um, with single ply, you can't really make socks with it because it kind of pills quite well. So I thought and I wanted to use them up. I didn't want to just keep them in my stash forever. So I thought they go together quite nice. So I'm really pleased with that. Um, I'm going to finish the socks first and then this is going to be my evening project. So there we go. Um, so I'm going to put this back. I had two skeins of this and the other thing as well that was in the in the back of my mind was I thought if I've got two skeins of this and that can like be a something that can be like a a main colour in a in a top in a in a garment or something um can i mix something in i kind of felt like if i was using one out of it for a shawl it i'd be like splitting up a pack but it's done now it's done so i'm going to put this back in my stash and i thought i'd lost this before and i haven't so i'm gonna put oh no i found that i just it's the silver one that i've put to one side so I'm going to put, it'll be, it'll be somewhere, it'll be in the house somewhere and it won't have got too far. So I'm going to put that in my bag, a little grey girl bag that I've got. I'm going to come back to bags in a bit. Um, so I've finished that one. Um, I've got, yes I've got two, I've got two new cast ons. yeah. Um, I don't even know why I started a new pair of socks. I think I just wanted something plain on the go. I don't know. But look at these. Look at these. They're so pretty. They're not for me. <laughs> so, and that was, I went to the cinema last night to watch Ghostbusters. I was going to say to watch Blockbusters. Old. Um, and that was the progress that I did. Um, so this is a, a really nice soft lilac cell striping with little bits of pops of colour. And this is for my lovely mother-in-law, um, Chris. She's she's got a couple of pairs of my socks. And we were talking about them when we were up a couple of weeks ago. And I think I think the very first pair of socks that I made, I'd only not long started it in socks. And you know when you make them with the two, you do them on too big a needle and they're too loose a gauge and they're just really baggy. And she's, oh, well, those ones I do wear for those in bed. I said, oh, and you know, I thought if you want to kind of, you know, recycle the yarn or whatever or she said chuck them out it's really wasteful isn't it? no don't chuck them um but as I've, I've got better over you over the years of making them she goes oh she's a really really like them and i thought oh I'll make it i might make her another i might make her another one she does like quite um more neutral ones so this is probably quite jazzy for her but it's like a, a soft it looks darker in the picture that's that's the kind of Right there. Um, so the yarn is um, from the lovely Sable Yarns. And sadly she closed down. Um, so I got this um, discounted in at Yarndale in September just gone. And I liked it because it was all already caked up and all like, you know, they wrap a few strands around to kind of show you what the colour is going to be 
Um, so this one is called Purple Rain. It's 75% um, Superwash Merino and 25% Nylon. So just a your bog standard um, sock on there. So, yep, I'm happy that those are on the needles. Because I always like to have something on the go that you can grab and like if you get called for to the cinema that you got something that you can knit in the dark with. Not just me. Um this one is in my Bertie and Poppet bag. And you know she sent me a disc for the pull for the zip was really kind of her because I've lost it and it's fallen off again what is what is it with me I've got I've got it I can see it but when I'm sat here I just need to like attach it back on it's me um so I've got living in here is a new cast on that I've started it's gonna be it's a really squishy garter stitch blanket and it's called the big marl m-a-r-l the big marl and what this is 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 basically a stash down blanket where i'm getting all my little bits of four plies all the little bits you your odds and odds and ends and knit them all together and I'm literally knitting them all until they run out just I've just got loads and loads of bits and it's doing my head in and I just want to use them up and this is a free pattern um, from Hedgehog Fibres so if you go onto the Hedgehog Fibres Instagram page and in their bio is a link to the website and then on their website it says um, something like free patterns or free pattern downloads or something like that. And you scroll down, there's loads of lovely patterns of hats and cardies and shorts and stuff like that. But there's two blankets all together. If you're a crochet, if you prefer to crochet, there's a crochet version of this as well. Um, but then if you keep scrolling down and click uh, like see more or something, then that's when you kind of see that one. Now, I've differed from the pattern, so I'm just going to have a slip kind of thing. Because the pattern was saying um, the two strands of DK held with two strands of four ply and do it on 10 mil needles. Now, I don't really have an awful lot of DK, let alone scraps of DK, but I've got shed loads of uh, four ply and fingering weight and sock yarn and acrylic sock yarn and all that stuff so I've done four strands of the four ply but obviously if I'm substituting two DK strands of two four ply it's going to have that more drapier thing so I've brought my needle size down to eight millimeters so it's still quite a thick still quite a thick needle so this is going to be a blanket for one of my brothers. Um, he's they are both pretty knitworthy actually, really. Um, I've knit blankets on them before and they really, really enjoy it. They've got a throw on the sofa, which has been there for, for years and they love that. Um, they live in a very cold of the winter um, Yorkshire stone terrace house that just gets so cold. Um, so this to put on the put a throw on the bed a bit more so yeah that is that and it's oh what I like about the pattern can you see you knit like a fake well it's not a fake it is the actual eye cord bind off but you knit it as you go so it just gives you that nice tidy edging and I really like that. I thought I had another new cast on, I obviously don't. Um, 
There's something I wanted to show you though about what I'm gonna have in the pipeline. Give me a minute. It is over here. Right, in my designer bag. So, about, I was thinking about when I bought this and it's, I think it's about 12 months ago. Um, I think it's April or is it June? Um, the, at the Armley Mill um, Wool Festival in Leeds, uh, Leeds Industrial Museum, I think it is. Um, they have a um, few stores there. It's really nice. Uh, it's not that, it's not a huge show, but to me it's just right. And you get to see all the different machinery from back in the day. And they even put the machinery on and give like a, a go to it. It's really nice. Um, there's a lady, um, a vendor there. Sorry for the scrunching. And it is called um propaganda right she's not on all the um she doesn't go to all the <coughs> all the shows um and she doesn't i don't think she has a instagram page but the wall is amazing so this is like what they call frangipani guernsey wool Right, I got three hanks of this and it just smells of sheep. Um, it's really quite heavy. I weighed one before and one was 530 grams. I think they're sold advertised at 500 gram skeins but there might be a little bit more on them kind of thing now i it's i told her, I mean, so she gives you like a pattern but it's like a very it's not like a proper here's a pattern here's all the sizes it kind of gives you like a a basic chart it kind of states that it's like an a, a rectangle like the traditional style jumper you work out what your size is and then you just kind of you just kind of knit and do all the different different styles that you have um so <laughs> this is the bit that's like ooh. it's five ply yarn Right, it's really, really hard wearing. You can, it's quite soft as well. I thought that it'd be quite woolly, but it's really, it feels as soft as merino, but you can tell it's sturdier. And um, that's what I would kind of, that's my, my review. Now you're probably asking, why did you get three? Because I'm sat there thinking if I, if I was to knit a jumper, a four ply jumper for myself, um, I would probably take about four skeins maximum, so like 400 grams. And obviously one of these is 500 grams. Now, I can't remember the conversation. I don't know if in my head I wanted to make one for me and one for my husband. Who knows? Um, and obviously... Because I said to her, I said, how, how many do I need um, to make a jumper? And she said, oh, a lady's jumper. I'm sure she said was like, was like, she either said it was one or maybe two. But with me being like, because um, I'm over six foot, just in the belly a bit. Um, obviously, I'm probably be knitting for like a, a man's size quota really because just my 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 frame so i don't know if i could have got away with just one hank or two hanks or or what um so i can't remember the conversation and i think it's because i wasn't gonna my thinking at the, at the time is i thought if i if i do one jump and i absolutely love it 
and then want to do a second one but I don't quite have enough wool and then I'm not going to see it. I'd rather get a bit too much than not enough. Um, so, and she was just selling them for £20 each. So I thought, if I can do two jumpers for like £60. And these, with this wool, it's one of those ones that it's going to, they, they last for like literally half a century. Um, it's, she has some knitted up, some samples knitted up. And it's um it's not a heavy fabric, it's not as thick as Aaron, but it's almost like um it's like a windbreaker. It's a very densely knit that that's what keeps you you warm. And I thought I obviously knitted for the apocalypse and knitting for all the years nuclear windows and all this kind of thing. Um I this is something that's gonna be like a, a time investment for me. And I also think it'd be really good for wearing if I'm doing like a walk um, in the dales, more like autumn, winter time, where you, I don't want the big bulkiness, but something that's like really insulating. So I also didn't know what, I didn't know whether to kind of do it as a sweater or do it as a cardigan and a steep, but I think, I think just doing it as a traditional sweater, I think would be really good. So I... I ended up hand winding one of these <laughs> this morning and it took me an hour. I look at this. So yeah, that's a lot, a lot. Um, and you knit it, get this, on two and a quarter mil needles. She did say, look you're not gonna rattle this out in two months this is gonna be a, a a labor of love um so i bought the needles today i round up one and it might be one of those ones that i dedicate like a saturday morning to it and my saturday morning is just doing like a an inch or whatever um but i want to i've been putting the world to rights with my friend over the weekend about um I uh, basically my knitting and I've got I've got must have about four or five blankets on the go and I start off with all these great intentions and then because they're quite a long um a long process I get bored I think oh I'll just knit a jumper while I'm waiting I'll just knit a pair of socks and I thought I wanna I wanna get at least one or two blankets finished for this winter because I'm thinking well you know all these different reasons I think I wanna get into my um apocalyptic mindset of there's fuel prices, there's um fluctuations in weather events and all that kind of thing so I thought you never know do you if if there's going to be like issues with supplies of fuel so I think the more knitted items that I have then I'm all real nice warm and cosy so that was the the fan the extractor fan from the kitchen telling me that dinner will probably be ready in about five to ten minutes there we go I do do the cooking I did the cooking last night uh, and my lovely husband is making tea tonight because that is my studying like a good girl insert here now here um so yeah so my order of things that I want to do I'm gonna finish the finish the sock blank socks soon might even be tonight um I do have a little bit of a wish list of the smaller items that I'm going to keep for the train knitting but I am literally going to keep them strictly for the train knitting and not go oh I really enjoyed that I'm going to knit that in the evening and um, because I really want to put a dent into my blanket knitting I think working on my brother's blanket with all the um using up all the odds and odds and ends I think that'll be really like therapeutic and really like satisfying um Oh yes, this might be the last podcast I do um, before I go to Edinburgh. I'm going to the Woolly Good Edinburgh um, 
fiber festival fiber show that they've got on uh oh my goodness me where's the where's the venue it's i want to say Su summer hall summerton hall um i'll make a note of that and put that in the in the comments in the in my show notes underneath um so i'm going there um a week on friday going with some some friends if you listen to this podcast and you're going just give us a shout if you see me i'd love you to say hello and you know chat to me about what you're making what you're buying all that kind of thing um things that i'm on the lookout for i want to make another one of my, my um exposure top you know i've got that the um the pink the big v-neck one it's got no sleeves on it just looks like a almost like a not a tabard but kind of a being it because i it's a garment that i get really unexpected loads of wear out um and the pink i only needed two skeins with so i just went i thought if i find a really nice color that i like i'm gonna get two skeins of that i've got a dime in mind but i'm trying to be open-minded um the only other thing as well that i was tempted by now i've said before i'm not big um project bags do you know what I mean if I see one that's really cute then I get it but I'm thinking well I I feel like I have enough of me my little bags that I have little zip bags I know the ones that I like you now and yarn so so licious is a vendor there and I've looked at their bags and they look beautiful really really well made um they are more pricier than what i would normally pay for however i guess it is really there's a lot of work that's gone into the bags the fully lined and obviously the the ones like tote bags with the handles but then they've also got like the drawstring in the, in the middle so you can kind of open them up like more of like a, a bucket with like loads of different pockets everywhere um so i'm trying not to fill my head with all like oh you can buy like you know let's have a look at your budget right you can buy 10 skeins of all of that go 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 i think okay, well i've got plenty of plenty of stash to last me in the next six months anyway and um, this is more something that you know if i actually really enjoy it we'll use it we'll get wear out of it so there we go so there's my there's my plans anyway um budgeting tips what have i been up to what have i bought um we had two cinema trips over this easter holidays um one we did the sky um view tickets those are we get two free to two free view tickets a month um so we did that so we've got two free and just pay for one and then with my O2 Priority app, um, you can buy two tickets for £9. So I wrote it down. I think I wrote it down here, actually. Uh, yeah, so it should have cost us as a family £23.97. And we got it for £16.99. So it did kind of save us, save us a few quid. Which is really good. Um, and yeah, at the minute, I'm... Um, trying to use the proceeds of what I've been selling at um, on Vinted and any any earnings I get from the top cashback, that's gonna be my spending money for the Wool Festival because I feel like I am on a bit of a, a tight budget this year and it doesn't feel like it's coming out of the household budget, if that makes sense. Um, but that being said, it is also payday on that day that on the weekend that I go, so I really have to have a bit of a word on myself kind of thing. But um, I'm really looking forward to it. Really looking forward to it. Um, it'd be really good to to catch up with my friends and just have a couple of days just with like-minded people, get that creativity going, all different ideas and what to make. So. So yeah, and I'm gonna bring um, my propaganda wool with me so they can all have a bit of a squidge. Um, films, what have I been watching lately? I went to watch, and it's quite an old film, apparently, 25 years, maybe 30 years. 
old um, Kevin Costuming called The Postman because somebody had put um, like a chat on Facebook in one of these groups that I'm on um, like what's like your all time favourite apocalyptic films or what, what do you feel is like the most like um, realistic film and there's a lot of um, votes for The Road, which is really, really good. It's quite, it's, it's quite dark, but it's, it's really, really well made. And, um, there's, and so I was like, oh, I was like jotting down some films I've not heard before. One was Escape from, uh, Escape from New York. Um, but there was one, yeah, last night it was The Postman. And that's with uh, Kevin Costner in. Um, and that was really, really good. It's like a two and a half hour film. And what did I do? I fell asleep halfway through. I was like, literally on the couch, knitting in hand. And next thing I know, I woke up and the, the um, credits are going. I thought, and it wasn't because it wasn't entertaining. It was like, I was really enjoying it. I was just, just being tired. So I have to work out where I was up to and finish it off tonight. Um, so that's me. Do you have any recommendations? Any any films? I just feel like there's nothing. There's no fresh material for me at the moment, and just feel like I'm just rewatching ones that I've got. Um, as I film watched the other day, but it's not apocalyptic. It's um, the girl on the train. I thought I'd not watched that for about six, seven years. So I watched that again, and that was quite good. Emily Blunt, she's a really good actress, isn't she? Because she's she's done that many different, um, different films and different roles. She's really really good. Anyway, on that note, I shall love you and leave you. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope I've given you some kind of inspiration to make something new or try something. And as I say, play with different colours. Because look what I did. I tried. Sometimes you've got to try these things, and if you like it, great. If you don't, it doesn't matter. It can always be paired with something else. There are no rules in knitting. That's the beauty of it. And have a great week ahead, and I will see you soon. I'll try and podcast before I go to um, Edinburgh. Right, see you soon. Bye.